Howdy guys, and welcome to a good Friday. Um, as you noticed, I will not be in class today, so uh, instead the sub is going to help you go through a couple of assignments that I've got for you, because today we are starting our prep work into reading this book, this awesome book by John Steinbeck um, called Of Mice and Men. Um, now to start us off with Of Mice and Men, we're going to take a little look at some poetry, and uh, I know it's poetry, you guys get all nervous and things like that. Um, but it's not so bad. See, I just wrote this poem really quickly. Like, poems are easy. Poems are good. Yes, they are. I read them in my head, in the car, at Starbucks table, or safe at home. Poems come from me, where I roam. Um, now, poetry, I think, as it's taught in the public school systems, can be daunting and scary because it's all about, like, what do you think the author means? And what is symbolism? What are these things? And that's that. Um, we get confused because poems are usually really dense. Um, I have heard them, the best way that I've heard them described is that they're word economy, where a poet's job is to take as few words as possible and to pack as much meaning into those words as they can. But it's all right, because there's some steps that we can take to help us work through this. Um, so why do we look at poetry? Well, for one, especially in this case, is that poems and literature in general, um, art, movies, music, it's all about sort of a shared human experience. You know, just the same way we read Night. We didn't read Night because we're all going to go through a Holocaust. Um, God forbid, you know, that ever happens again at the same extent that it does in the human race. Um, but what we do realize is that there's a lot of similarities between these characters and what we're experiencing in our lives. And the fact that um, a lot of art, music, literature, they pull from what's already been created. You know, no art is created in a vacuum. All these poems and movies and musics that we like to listen to are based on something that has come before it. So, for example, you know, if a song lyric mentions Romeo and Juliet or Moby Dick, we as a culture sort of know what they're talking about. We, we've read Romeo and Juliet, or at least know the story. Um, and as such, we can say, like, oh yeah, that was that tragic story about these two people who fell in love, uh, even though their family said that they couldn't. So what we're going to do is we're going to read a poem called To a Mouse by Robert Burns. So I'm going to read it to you because I've got this great fake Scottish accent, and it's written by this Scottish guy named Robert Burns. So what I'll have you do is I'll have you sign into Google Classroom, as you probably already are, um, and what I want you to do is I want you to open up this poem to Robert Burns on this genius account right here. And genius is awesome. I'll explain it to you in a second. But first, just listen. This is To a Mouse by Robert Burns in my best Scottish brogue. The wee sleekest cower and timorous beastie. Oh, what a panic's in thy breasty. Thou need na start to wash thee tasty. We bicker and brattle. I would be lathe to rin and chase thee. We'd mutter and prattle. I'm truly sorry man's dominion has broken nature's social union and justifies that ill opinion which makes thee startle at me, thy poor earth-bound companion and fellow mortal. I doubt now whiles but while they thave. And what then, thy poor beastie, thou man leave? A day me an acre in thy thrave is small request. I'll get a blessing, we the lave, and never miss it. Thy wee bit housey too in ruin <sighs> is silly while the winds are strewed, and nothing, no, no big and new, uh, a fog and green, the bleak and December winds ensuing, lathe, snell, and keen. Thou saw the fields laid bare and west, and the wintry winter come fast, and cozy here beneath thy blessed thou dwell, the thought to dwell, to crash the cruel culture cold through past, and out through thy cell. Thy wee bit heaps o' leaves and stibble has cost thee money, a weary nibble, and now, and now thus turns out for thy trouble, but house or hull, to thole thy winter's sleety dribble, and crunceth cold. But mousy, thou art no thy lane, improving foresight may be vain, the best laid schemes o' mice and men, gang a gagly, gang aft gagly, and lay us not but grief and pain for promised joy. Still thou art blessed compared with me. The present only touches thee, but ouch, a backward cast my eye on prospects dear and forward, though I cannot see, I guess, and fear. Now, it's my guess that you understood a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of that. That because, number one, I spoke it in a weird Irish, or not Irish, uh, but Scottish brogue. But two, the language is really, really old. This poem was written um, a long, long time ago. 
But here's the beauty of the internet and the beauty of this site called Genius. Now, Genius is great because you can look up, you know, all of your favorite song lyrics and it sort of explains what's going on in those lyrics um, if you don't quite understand them. But the nice thing is they do it for poetry too. So if I click on a passage, it gives me not only a more modern English translation, but it also kind of tells me what this contributor thought um, was meant by the, the passage here. So even though I don't understand these lines over here, I can still understand the poem through the explanation, basically the translation um, of the internet. It's wonderful. So I want you to work through this poem again, um, line by line, and sort of figure out what the heck's going on in this poem about a mouse. And it turns out it's a farmer talking to a mouse, um, and he feels bad for disrupting his home. But it goes into a little bit more deeper thought than that. So that's the poem in general, but what I want us to do after we have sort of taken a look at the poem is the next step in poem. We call it explication. Now, explication just means um, explanation, like we got to figure out what this poem actually means. And so I've lined it out in four steps for you, because um, just taking this poem as a whole and trying to understand all of its meaning at once is difficult, and I'd say almost impossible. But if we break it down... We start to notice the small things that this poet is doing um, to explain this thing to us in a, in a more concrete sense. So step one, just take a look at the title. Why would he title this poem um, to a mouse? Next thing I want you to do is called soaps. And soaps basically just helps you identify who's speaking, why are they speaking, who are they speaking to. So take a look at the subject, the occasion, the audience, the purpose, and the speaker. And I'll give you a hint. The subject He's a farmer plowing his field. The occasion happens to be that he comes across a mouse's den that he accidentally plows up. Like he's destroyed this mouse's home. Um, go through the rest of these. These are sort of the, you know, very, very front, the surface level ideas of the poem. Then I want you to take a look at what are some of the language um, and images that are used in the poem. Um, is there anything powerful that sticks out to you or, or not? Um, and last thing I want you to say take a look at it. what's the tone so this guy's talking to a mouse right um, but how does he talk is he glad is he sad is he upset that he's done this or is he indifferent to the fact that he's destroyed this mouse's home and then maybe through all that we can sort of create some meaning about what the poet is saying and so to answer um, these questions what I've done is I've set up a little thing right here called explicating poetry on a Google form. I will open that up. And this is where I want you to put your answers. And your form will look a little bit different than mine since I have the master copy. Um, but basically, walk through the steps. Step one, what does the title mean? Step two, who's the subject? What's the occasion? Who's the audience? What are some images that come to mind? Now, for these ones here, for steps three, four, and then my final question, don't give me one word answers. Don't even give me one sentence answers. Develop your ideas. What are the images that he's talking about? And start trying to create some meaning. Why would he include some of those images? Same thing with tone. What, what feeling do we get with this poem? How is it related um, to these ideas that you've already identified and you've done a great job of over in step two? Lastly, what themes in this poem might relate to life experiences that you have? Because obviously, um, in the poem, he uses a line of mice and men, the best laid plans of mice and men. Um, I want you to think about maybe what that line means and maybe how that could relate to some uh, experiences that you've had in your life. So one note about forms is you can't save forms. Once you start, you have to finish. Um, so I think you should have time to get through all of this in one class period. Um, do your best and submit whatever you have by the end of the period. And I want you to finish it all. Should you finish that up, um, I've got one more assignment that I'd like for you to do. Um, should you finish, I want you to start on the Google Classroom assignment that's right above this one. And I want you to work on, it's called Illustrating Steinbeck. Because um, what we're going to do is we're going to read this passage about these um, transient workers, or this book of Mice and Men about transient workers going to California. Um, and so to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to take a look at this document here. And then I want you to illustrate it by taking a look at these passages, going insert, and insert an image from right here, go to the search function, and then use the search function 
to figure out what you want to include. And drop it in like that. Best of luck.